approximately 1.3 million acres of Everglades National Park is wilderness, and very few people really get off the, the beaten path. But this is a really great jumping off point for doing that. Uh, you can go out, fishermen love this area, uh, paddlers also love this area, and probably one of my favorite things to do here is paddling. I would definitely recommend planning your trips with the wind if possible, but definitely with the tides as well. This is all a tidally influenced area. Some of the places you can camp, if you go all the way out to the Gulf of Mexico, you can camp here on beaches, uh, but there's also more inland route, uh, something known as the Wilderness Waterway. It's a 99 mile uh, boating trail, or canoe, kayak trail, however you want to do it. Um, starting here and going all the way to the south end of the park here in Flamingo. So it's a little bit more inland. It opens up to some large bays, but you can stay on, on different ground sites, but there's also chicky sites. So these chicky sites are elevated over the water and it's really just a, a platform to, to put a tent for the night. If you guys want to go out into the backcountry on the Wilderness Waterway, uh, definitely check out our website, www.nps.gov ever. And right there you can find the Wilderness Trip Planner. The Wilderness Trip Planner is really what you need to do, the checklist the, to really start planning your trip. How common is it for boaters to get stuck out here? I think from the locals that who have lived here all their lives, they say nobody doesn't get stuck. So everyone's gotten stuck at least once, but from what I hear, it happens a lot. Out here, I tell them to, instead of go as fast as you think you can, go slow and look at what you're getting into. Read your charts. They'll, they usually tell you the average water. So if it says one foot, maybe want to go somewhere else. People like to see the dolphins, people like to see the ospreys, occasionally we'll see a bald eagle, and the wading birds as well. That's what people really like to see, but sometimes they, they forget about the smaller life that's, that's really eating these leaves here. We have crabs, we have snails, we have so many different little life forms, and unless you really take some time out here, it's very difficult to really get a grasp of what this place has to offer. But if you guys want to come out, you want to do some backcountry camp, and want to do some fishing, you might want to think twice uh, if you're trying to do it during the summer months. I'd say really our peak season is late November and then into early April. I'm in Everglades City. I'm here at the Ranger Station. I'm going to be, over the next 11 days, I'm going to Flamingo, which is roughly, I think on the outside, it's going to be about 80 miles. But once you get in, day's paddle away from Everglades City. You're, you're by yourself for the most part. It's a great experience to do the West Coast. I mean, most people see the Everglades from a road, you know, the Park Service Road coming down, which is pretty, but um, you don't really get to see what it's like, especially out here. Um, this is a different area and uh, very pretty. And uh, you, kinda, you have to get your feet wet to see the Everglades. to come to Flamingo to see certain things that you may not easily see elsewhere in the park. The Flamingo Visitor Center is a really good place to start out in Flamingo to learn about what you can do here, different kinds of activities, ranger guided programs, backcountry camping, backcountry permits, canoe and hiking routes, and all of the other opportunities that you can experience here at Flamingo. It's also a great place to learn about some of the recent wildlife sightings, various conditions, weather conditions, tide conditions. Flamingo is a jumping off point to explore one of the biggest wilderness areas in the United States and certainly the biggest wilderness area east of the Rocky Mountains. And that includes Florida Bay and the mangrove backcountry. And a good example of that would be the Wilderness Waterway. Uh, the Wilderness Waterway is a 99 mile canoe, kayak and boat route that leads from Flamingo all the way to Everglades City on the Gulf Coast um, to the northwest of here. For those folks that want to do a canoe trip around Flamingo, uh, you can bring your own canoe or kayak. Uh, there are canoe rentals at the marina. We have ranger guided canoe trips.
This is a great place for birds. A lot of birds start coming in here in the, in the winter months. So say from about December through around March in, into April, that's a good time to come for birds. The Flamingo area is considered world-class fishing. People come here to catch all kinds of fish. Tarpon, snook, redfish, sea trout, snapper, black drum, sharks, you name it. There's so many different kinds of fish out here. It's an exciting place that way. And you can go almost anywhere around Flamingo, whether it be out here in a place like Snakebite, in other parts of Florida Bay, or into the mangrove backcountry. There are fish everywhere you go. We always like to share with visitors different safety considerations that they need to take into account if they're going to do a paddling trip, um, whether it be a short or a long trip into the Everglades. And things to be aware of are changing tides, wind conditions, severe weather, the sun. We always recommend people bring sun protection, sunglasses, sunscreen, bring plenty of water. It's always good to be prepared when you're gonna go out into the backcountry. There's a campground at Flamingo and also a marina. And at the marina, there's canoe rentals, boat rentals, boat tours, a small convenience store, gas, bicycle rentals, restrooms. I think what I appreciate most about the nature of, of this area, there's two things. I appreciate the fact that there are all kinds of species here, hundreds of different kinds of plants and animals, birds, fish, insects. You can spend your life and numerous lifetimes studying all of this life here and marveling at it and discovering it. But I also like the fact that it has a tropical character to it. So a lot of this life is from the Caribbean. You won't find it anywhere else in the country, but right here at the southern tip of Florida. And Flamingo is a great showcase for that Caribbean life. Animals like crocodiles, white crowned pigeons, a variety of different kinds of plants and trees, orchids, bromeliads, weird trees with funny names like gumbo limbo and mansion eel. So it, again, it's just all of these different things that you, can, that you can experience here in terms of the natural history. It just goes on and on. Where are the flamingos?